Blessed love my family. It is time to step into the tiger's nest. Join me every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for the Tiger's Nest. Right here on Radio Anu, the international flavor, the universal spice. Hosted by the Honorable Priest Isaac. Bless you. Definitely give thanks Life giver and the keeper of life When I am dead, wrap the mantle of the red, the black and the green around me For in the new life I shall rise up first with God's praise and blessing To lead the millions of the heights and the triumph that you will know Look for me in a world and I'll farm. Look for me all around you, for the south wind. I just come back with countless millions of black men and women who have died in America, those who have died in the West Indies, and those who have died in Africa. So I do with the fight for liberty, freedom, and life. Yeah. Freedom, and life. And we're talking exactly four minutes after the hour of uh, seven o'clock on a wonderful Monday evening as we speak of the 18th day of the month of October 2021. We definitely give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life, Emperor Haile Selassie I. We give thanks for being in your presence even at this moment. Of course, yes, obviously you have stepped into the tiger's nest. If you do not know, this is a, a program that comes to you every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at this exact time, 7 p.m. sharp, right here on the International Flavor, the Universal Spice, Radio Anu. And of course, you could find Radio Anu, of course, on the website, the platform, of the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge, which is Priest 
isaacinstitute.com no apostrophe s's at all of course your humble servant for the moment the honorable priest isaac here with you giving thanks that you have definitely decided to step in and of course you know bask with us in the meditation that we shall go in this evening i think you already know where we are going we're going to be talking about the symbol of the broom and the mystic of the connection with the broom and of course even within the order of the bobo shanti and we're going to somewhat continue from where we um, right off or some people say left off when we were on the YouTube program. For those of you who saw us on YouTube, we did a video entitled The Black Saint with the Broom as we were highlighting the ancient Saint Martin de Porres of Peru of Lima specifically. And that brings me to a very important point. Before we go into anything, we have some announcements that we have to make this evening. And once again, let me just thank everyone, no matter where you are internationally, uh, my brothers and sisters in Ghana, in Kenya, in South Africa, in Ethiopia, you know, continually, you know, tuned in to us in Sierra Leone. Give thanks to the brothers and sisters in the UK, those right here in the carry beyond, carried so far beyond where we belong. Yeah. And of course, our brothers and sisters in the United States, in South America, Central America, wherever you are, Europe, Sweden, give thanks to the brethren and sisters all over the planet. A heart of love from the Institute here. Now, even just on the heels of this, eh, a couple of things, as I said, I want to mention to you before we go to the depths of it, a few things, a eh, few things, where should I begin? Okay, listen to this. You need to get your pen and your pad and whatever it is that you use to, to, to get things certified, to make everyone know and, and you know to jot down the date and to make sure you remember. This is what you need right now. So even if it's your phone, your iPad, whatever it is, you need to put the date, the 3rd of November on your calendar. What am I speaking about? The 3rd of November. Just make sure that you put the 3rd of November aside. Now I know that you're listening to Radio Anu. But of course, we have established Radio Anu. We have established the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge. And you always hear us say we are still under construction. We prefer to use the term we are still evolving. You know, evolu our, 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 um, you know our primary evolution stage. We will always be evolving. But there's a stage we need to go to, get to, before we officially launch this. So this is what I'm talking about. On the 3rd of November. We're going to have the official launch of the Institute's website. That is the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge website and Radio Anu International. I'm speaking slowly so you could clearly understand what I'm saying. Now, hear this good. Eh? This is the official, this is the first of an annual event. I mean, well, we're not launching it every year. This year, which is the first year, is the launch. But it's going to be a Patreon's Day slash Webathon. You hear this? Patreon's Day. So this is the day for the patrons. This is this is something I don't think you've ever seen anything, you know, the, the likes of such. As you know, even when you visit our website, you could see that there are many things that we have to offer. I think I have so many things to offer that some of us even forget the things that we have to offer, you know, from, from our weekly radio programs that we copy and um, specifically not copy, but what you call it, um, um, not download, what you call it. I, we use the record <laughs> that we record when it's broadcasted. Well, it's still copy in a sense. Uh, when we broadcast it, and we definitely send that out from our international homeschool program that we literally, uh, that's an academic year program. We also have several books from the, the, uh, the, the biblical land of Israel and Anu, et cetera. We have several courses that are coming on stream as well. And then of course, we have 
our DVD documentaries, our full-length documentaries, The Night of the Black Tiger, the documentary Seven, etc. And of course, we have the Cosmic series. Let's not forget the Cosmic series as well. And several things that we have in store just for you as well. And even when you go to the store, you see our merchandise from our from our shirts and and and, and a lot of the creative works of the Honorable Prince Alamasi as well. And the different items that we have, you know, pro pro projecting and and speaking of our institute. So there's so many things we have to offer. And then within services we also have the yoga and that the the meditational yoga as well specifically and and um, and, and many aspects of counseling as it deals with childbirth so remember this is the the the, the institute eh? of holistic knowledge so we have a lot of items we have a lot of services to offer and on that day the day which is known as patreon's day we will be definitely having special offers on all our products throughout the whole day. Now, the day is, listen to me, eh? the day is going to begin from 6 a.m. in the morning, 6 until midnight. That is the length and breadth of this day. And this is like we will have special guests throughout the day interviews, speakers, and, and we will have a special guest sound as well. So, so even in the upcoming days, you'll be getting more details on exactly what is happening on the 3rd of November. This is the day Menelik II was crowned emperor. Eh? The day after Emperor Haile Selassie I was crowned emperor, eh? definitely. So this is going to be something, and eh? this is going to be just nonstop vibration throughout the day. You know, music and entertainment, and enough knowledge and edification. We're going to have different speakers coming in, different guests. I mean, from all you know, all walks, if you want to call it, from from whether it's uh, whether it's professors or doctors or or, or um, um, what do you call it, historians. And, musicians we're going to have many ones coming in and, and sharing the joy and love with us as we are celebrating the launching officially of the international holistic website and of course the radio anu international again the third of november i'm just kind of breaking the ice here you're going to hear so much about that in the weeks to come the strongs to come really because it's stronger and stronger that we are getting. And I will be revealing to you the different offers that we have. Eh? So you will know exactly what we're talking about and see that we ain't playing around. On this day, every year, we're gonna make it our business via Radio Anu. We got, we're always gonna have products, family. That's what we're into, creating products and bringing them to the market and and what they say barter and trade that's what life is about so we we always going to have products of value products that could add to you products that could strengthen your your consciousness and outlook and physical self whatever it is because we deal with holistic knowledge and on this day the third of november you understand as we celebrate menelik the second's coronation every year we're going to have a Patreon's Day every single year where we definitely basically give you the, the as I just said a moment ago, all our products and services, a special offer will be going out throughout the day. And even special times of the day, like maybe for an hour, a special hour, we have a super offer on something, man, and you have to order it or get it within that hour. I mean, I'm serious. That's how it is. Showing, showing all of that is giving back. Eh? You buy one, you may get five free. You never know. All of that <laughs> is giving back. So anyway, just look forward, man. It's something you'll definitely full joy. You know, and as, as I said, the main theme here is the launching of, of Radio Anu International. And also it will be a telethon as well. You know, of course, as you could obviously see, we prefer to give back. We give services, goods, you know, and, and something tangible that you can deal with. But at the same time, there are those who just delight to donate. There are those, I mean, there are people who would 
donate and clearly tell you they don't want nothing. Don't even try to send them anything. They just are happy with the work you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll be having a, a live webinar, webathon, really, but they call it telethon, but we're dealing with more than the tele, the tele, the telephone. You know, we will be dealing with the different aspects, whether it be Facebook, whether it be our email for sure. And of course, we will be taking not only pledges, but literal donations for sure. Pledges usually fall far from the tree sometimes. But anyway, um, you know, the, 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 the main links that we'll be using on that day and that we use in general is the Cash App and of course the PayPal. And the Cash App is Priest Isaac um, um, 27. And of course, the PayPal is the very same as the Institute email, Priest Isaac Institute at Gmail. That's our email is the very same for the PayPal and we'll be utilizing those and any other, uh, if you do not have those, I should say, there are other means and ways where the transaction can be made for your donation or contribution on that day, which is the 3rd of November, where we'll be having that grand telethon, webathon, webathon as well. So this is a big thing, family. This is what I'm telling you. This is a big thing. We're going to have a grand day throughout the day. I'll be here for the whole day, and I'll be making a special presentation on the evening. That evening will be a special tiger's nest, and that one is going to go further than even an hour so i'm looking for all the loved ones man those who are have a real heart for what they see us do you know to as much as possible be a part of that day i know some people may be saying oh why well, don't do it on the weekend or do it on the sunday and i know no we 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 um we, we are, we're dealing with the the third of november first of all and um to be very honest i i prefer to do it in a, what do you call it, a corporate working day as well, to be very honest. So make sure when you go to the office, you put on radio anu. Make sure when you go to the job site, you put on radio anu. And this is a different time. Internet and Wi-Fi is everywhere. Make sure everyone in the hangar and everyone in the office and everyone in the kitchen listening to radio anu on that day. If they're conscious, there'll be something for everyone. If they're not conscious, well, there's still something for them, not for them in the unconscious state, but to bring them out of the unconscious state because a lot of teaching knowledge and vibration on that day so just making sure you my listeners get a good idea of exactly what will be taking place on that day i'm talking about the third of november once again it's patreon's day it's going to be an annual thing you know and a webathon but this year the first year is the official launch of the institute's website and radio and the international wow i think you clearly understand what it is that will be going on now here it is i have something special happening on sunday something very very special going on uh, this sunday but um i'm going to just give me a moment there let me just um refresh the vibes before i speak about that this is the uh, tiger's nest Give thanks for your presence with us right here, specifically on Radio Anu International. This is the international flavor. This is definitely the universal spice. Definitely Honorable Priest Isaac here with you as we continue. Blessed love family. Great news from the Priest Isaac's Institute of Holistic Knowledge. We are now enrolling new students for our ongoing international homeschool program. Yes, family, now is the time to contact us to get more information on our African heritage classes as well as our astronomy classes. Let me explain. Our classes are factually and scientifically based, plus designed and prepared for the inquisitive yet tender mind of the child. Classes are sent out daily via the email and will appear in your inbox every Monday to Thursday. Your young ones will receive over 140 classes in a 10 month period. That's an academic year. Interactive, colorful, 
your children will love it and you will be happy that you made that investment in them. But listen to this. We have a very special offer for you, family. This 10-month homeschool program usually goes for $50 per month. But for a limited time, you will pay only $30 per month. And hear this, not three, but $200 for the full academic year if you decide to take the full year package. <laughs> this is a worthy investment in your young ones. To enroll today, email us at priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com or visit the website priestisaacinstitute.com for more information. Also, feel free to ask us for a sample, a free sample of our classes. Once again, priestisaacinstitute at gmail.com. We're looking forward to hear it from you. Bless it. You're listening to Radio Anu, the international flavor, the universal Three minutes after the hour of seven o'clock. Hey, I'm welcoming all those who are just coming in. Give thanks for your presence with us. You're in the Tiger's Nest right here on Radio Anu. the tiger's nest every evening at the hour of seven o'clock at this moment and then this time give thanks for your presence with us again now this is where we are you know as i said we were speaking of 
on another platform, we were speaking about St. Martin de Porres. So, you know, just for those who may not have heard that presentation, let me just show the link that we, we made. And quite interesting, his feast day is the 3rd of November too. You understand? This is the same time that we are launching our, our, um, our a Patreon day, you know, and he's considered a Patreon. Interesting, that, that's very mystic here. This wasn't planned like that. It's, you know, in fact, a lot of this has been revealed as I speak to you, I'm telling you. But anyway, <laughs> how mystic it is, the whole divine link. So just, just in the interest of those who may have missed it, let's just read this quickly. It says here, St. Martin de Porres was born in Lima, Peru on December the 9th, 1579. Martin was the illegit illegitimate, the son of a Spanish gentleman. I think, you see, we, don't, we so don't like to use that term really, but so that's why it didn't want to come out. Uh, um, Spanish gentleman and freed a slave from uh, Panama and a freed slave from Panama of African or possibly Native American descent. Now, of course, we show that even our, 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 um, our great scholar and ancestor, Brother Ronoko Roshid, even clarified this for us, that it was no, uh, no disrespect to the American Indian, but it was an American Indian as such. It was a black woman, black African woman, uh, African woman. Good. That's her name? Yeah, Evgenia. Give me the name there. Evgenia. Evgenia, see? Okay, give thanks to the Honorable Princess with that. Mm -hmm. At a young age, Martin's father, a father abandoned him, his mother and his young sister, leaving Martin to grow up in deep poverty. After spending just two years in primary school, Martin was placed with a barber slash surgeon where he would learn to cut hair and the medical arts. As Martin grew older, he experienced uh, a great deal of ridicule of being mixed race in Peru by law. All descendants of African and Indian were not allowed to become full members of religious orders. Martin, who spent long hours in prayer, found his only way into the community he longed uh, for was to ask the Dominicans of Holy Rosary Priory in Lima to accept him as a volunteer who performed the most menial tasks in the monastery. In return, he would be allowed to wear the habit and live within the religious community. When Martin was 15, he asked for admission into the Dominican convent of the Rosary in Lima and was received as a servant boy and eventually was moved up to the church officer in charge of distributing money to uh, deserving poor. During his time in the convent, Martin took on his old trades of barbering and healing. He also worked in the kitchen, did laundry and cleaned. After eight more years with the Holy Rosary, Martin was granted the, the privilege to take his vows as a member of the Third Order of Saint Dominic by the Priory, Priory uh, Juan de Lorenzana, who decided to disregard the law, restricting Martin based on race. However, not all of the members in the Holy Rosary were as open-minded as Lorenzana, Martin was called horrible names and mocked for being illegitimate and descending from slaves. Martin grew to become a Dominican lay brother in 1603 at the age of 24. 10 years uh, later, after he had been presented with the religious habit of a lay brother, Martin was assigned to the infirmary where he would remain in charge until his death. He became known he became known for encompassing the virtues needed to carefully and patiently care for the sick, even in the most difficult situations. Martin praised for his unconditional care of all people, regardless of race and wealth. Mar Martin was praised, pardon me, for his unconditional care of all people, regardless of race or wealth. Good. He took care of everyone from the Spanish nobles to the African slaves. Martin didn't care 
if the person was diseased or dirty, he would welcome them into his own home. Martin's life reflected his great love for God and all God's gift. It is said that he had many extraordinary abilities, including aerial flights, um, by, by location, in instant cures, miraculous knowledge, spiritual knowledge, and an excellent relationship with animals. Martin also founded an orphanage for uh, abundant children and slaves, and it is known for and is known for raising dowry uh, for young girls in short amount of time. Okay, good. Uh, during an epidemic in Lima, many of the friars in the convent of the Rosary became very ill, locked away in a distant section of the convent. They were kept away from the prof from the prof the the professed profess professed. Okay. However. On more than one occasion, Martin passed through and the locked doors to care for the sick. He passed through the locked doors to care for the sick. That means he walked to the wall or something. However, he became disciplined for not following the rules of the convent. You know, like, how dare you walk to the wall, I guess. <laughs> but after replying, forgive my errors and please instruct me, for I did not know that the precepts of obedience took pre precedence over that of charity. He was given full liberty to follow his heart in mercy. Martin was great friends with both Juan Macias, who, who a fellow Dominican lay brother, and Saint Rose of Lima, a lay Dominican. In January of 1639, when Martin was 60 years old, he became very ill with chills, fevers, um, tremors, causing him agonizing pain. He would experience almost a full year of illness until he passed away on the 3rd of November, 1639. Gift dance. All right. And that was taken from Catholic.org and Saints slash, slash Saints. And um, I'll say it that PHP. And yes, really interesting. I mean, for those of you who may have seen the YouTube that we did, we did a, a YouTube uh, presentation directly dealing with the saint, Saint Martin um, uh, um, de Porres. And so we actually read that whole thing. So those who may have heard us read it, uh, read it before, of course, well, that could only be added reinforcement because repeti repetition is the mother of learning. But yes, I'm telling you, even when we announced that we would be doing that program, you know, that, that link wasn't seen as yet with the 3rd of November. Because you see, the 3rd of November is Menelik's coronation day. And Menelik II is directly linked to the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards. You know, they, they, we, we already show that direct link even on a video we have there on the YouTube, where you, you see the direct link that Menelik II have with the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, even the 1st of March Battle of Adawa, the, the Battle of Adawa of which Menelik II led, you know, Ethiopia to victory. Rasmo Kenen Empress Taitu led Ethiopia to victory, it was on the 1st of March, 1896. King Emmanuel started the Congress on the 1st of March in 1958. You know, just, just the resemblance of how they, they, they look, Menelik II and of course, King Emmanuel Charles Edwards and height structure and everything. Menelik II ever have his head in a wrapped cloth like a turban, whether he have on his crown or his, his gallon hat or whatever you call that kind of hat there, but his head ever covered in that priestly way. That, that many, and many other things, you know, we can go into it, but we have done documentaries directly highlighting that. So I'm just seeing it interesting. And of course, the, the homage that Emperor Haile Selassie I paid to Menelik II, you know, and then you can't just, you can't even go against again, looking at a photo of Menelik II and King Emmanuel. But still, seeing how interesting it is, the coronation day, the 3rd of November, and that's the same day 
that the, the saint with the broom passed, but I was making the link of the saint with the broom, not really with Menelik, but with Bobo Shanti and even the order of the Honorable King Emmanuel Charles Edwards, as we were highlighting how Bobo Shanti, you know, directly deal with the broom, how the broom is a very integral part of Ionai culture, as the broom is not just industrial, but has a very spiritual component of which I want to get into this evening. I'm talking about that spiritual component of the broom and exactly the science of it. Now, is King Emmanuel teach us the spiritual component of the broom in it? But I'm still going to take, I'm going to take the time to look at what, um, you know, you know, when you speak of the broom with any science, you'd always hear about the witches riding her broom. You know about that. All right. So I want to delve into that somehow to see the mystics of exactly the connection of why that is so. And when you watch Fantasia, you see the broom sweeping up the room and nobody sweeping the broom. What is the mystics with this broom? As I said, the Shaolin man in his temple house have the broom in the corner. You know, so, so there's a science with King Emmanuel himself when he returned with the broom. You know, these are just signs, you know, that's how you know. Remember, eh? let me show you something. Remember when the disciples were moving with Christ after he resurrected. This is after he resurrected, you know, and, and he was showing them, you know, certain heights and they were saying this man is high, but they didn't know it was Christ. And they said that when they sat down to eat bread, either the way he blessed the bread or the way he broke the bread, something he did and they said, but wait. Is only one man do that like that. It must be him. So, so why he had to do that for them to know that it was him? What he looked different? Did we shave off his beard or something, cut his hair, disguise mode. What is it? You know, because we're reading allegories that has to do with reincarnation too. So, so that's what King Emmanuel teach us: reincarnation. John the Baptist, Marcus Garvey, they come again, and there are things about them. I repeat, family, there are things about them. There are things about them that make you know that, okay, that is him come again. You know? So so even when I was speaking of the broom, just kind of, you know, putting it out there, I wasn't even penetrating the 3rd of November. I'm talking of Menelik II, who is King Emmanuel on the next level for sure. I just don't want to go too deep into that part, but it's there. You could go to the YouTube, you find that video there. You know, King Emmanuel Menelik II, easy to find. You know, take time. That's about an hour and a half eh, worth of teaching. So, you know, take time to really break it down or build it up. But that is clear. We're not asking, we know that. So, Mystic, the coronation day, and the day the, the, the saint with the broom pass on. Very mystic. And still the saint with the broom representing, you know, the saints with the broom and the man that come with the broom, King Emmanuel and the broom, you know. And I, I still highlight what he did. They say he walked through the wall to, sick, to, to heal the sick. All these little things here, whether man believe it or not, they always talk about King Emmanuel walking through the wall and King Emmanuel levitating. Whether you believe it or not, or whether it's just something that stick with him, well, it shows again because it's something that stick with St. Martin de Porres. You, I'm sure, I'm sure if you don't believe King Emmanuel walked your wall, I don't expect you to believe St. Martin de Porres walked your wall, but that's what they say about him. And that's what they say about King Emmanuel. Eh? You know, even before we came on here, you know, um, King I just asked him put up a, a, a video about um, King Emmanuel and bon, Ras Bonerges, and I can't even remember who the third one was, but he was saying, um, the, the title was something about Obiaman and in Jamaica and Obiaman. Exactly, it's them signs. That's what people say about King Emmanuel. It's like a, that they say so, eh? He's like an Obiaman, you know? Very loving Obiaman, no? But why they say that? Just how he move and things that he do. And, you know, you see him here, then he look around, he disappear. Real Shaolin vibes. Real Shaolin vibes. King Emmanuel, I tell you, real Shaolin vibes. And this is not no extra thing, you know. And that is why I like to look at things very realistic. Eh? Very, very realistic. 
you know, uh, they, they walk through the wall thing. And so, I mean, th this is debatable. People debate these things. I'm not trying to convince nobody to believe or to accept. Let me put it this way. A uh, King Emmanuel either walked through a wall or what's the other thing? Or levitate when he meditated. You know, I, I personally never see that. But I mean, I ain't going to deny it neither. Eh? But I'm not telling you, well, you got to believe that that's what happened. I'm just showing you how mystic the links are within the ancient and the modern. That's all I'm showing you. And and I'm telling you, King Emmanuel, if there's mystic people, now let's keep this in mind, man. Being mystic and and, and all of these things is not, you know, you know, like for one somebody. Is enough mystic people around to keep using the same one word. Come on, enough people, people that. I hear people, you know, be a witness to things that I can only tell you what they say. Some of us who say, well, nobody ever died and come back. People tell you, yeah, they know people are dead and come back and say, and not, not me. You know, people will tell you that. And people have had some very um, out of earth or supernatural experiences. <laughs> and, and I mean, this earth, this earth, I mean, just up the last night, like cool and just to show how we believe that so many mystic things happen just last night cool and calm we watching the cloud me and the honorable prince and tree light just come out of the cloud clean clean just cool 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 just tree bright light and just go back in the cloud again cool 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 <laughs> not no plane or nothing eh? i know i see that with my eyes last night and we see that, we say, you see that? Yeah, okay. And we just move back on, continue life, because we know it's all sort of mystic things taking place around us. We're not going to lose our heads. Wow, we said, call 911 or something. Yeah, but I know that was no plane. That was no helicopter. That was no, that was just a mystic thing, you know, by itself. So I'm just showing you the reality in real time, eh? in real time that they're mystic things don't 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 block your mind you don't have to get spooky we're not talking spooky so we just talking real thing most of you especially if you are of adult age i'm sure you've seen things in your life that you can't even exp explain properly what you saw but you could tell the story like boy up to this day i can't explain what really happened but all i know is that he was there and then when I look around, he wasn't there. That's I know that. I know he couldn't go around no corner. He couldn't run fast enough to go around the wall. So I can't explain what happened. But I know that there was no hole in the ground. Everyone has something like that. Because everything is not what it, you, you believe. So I'm just, I'm just putting that on the ground just so you don't feel, you know, like if you're gone into the twilight zone when someone speak of the mysticness of King Emmanuel. Even when they say he dropped his structure, it's not a whirlwind and so have to visit the procession. Whirlwind, visit the procession and blind everybody and lock off camera. So you could see you're not dealing with a regular human being. You don't have to believe he's Christ or God, but you're not dealing with just a simple energy. That's what I'm saying. And I would repeat, they have other people that are not simple energy too. I'm not trying to turn it religious to you. Eh? I'm just looking at it real. I like to look at things real. That's why when it comes to the emperor and so I know they have enough mystic things, but but that don't give you the permission to come and put hot sauce on it and spice it up more than what it really is. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The man with the brew, man. The man with the broom ain't hey, moving too far. They're gone ahead of me. The man with the broom. All right. Listen to this one, family. Mm -hmm. And this is why we have to do what we have to do. Eh? Enough one going here and it says, oh, vampire and this and vampire and that. Fire burn this and fire burn that. But I mean, can they make the point in the same way as we make it? <laughs> This is the tiger's nest. Give that. 
Up on them shoulder is a big bungle. Sell them to your auntie, to your cousin. When your pocket broke, him, I go sell your single. See the bubble did last with the broom. On your shoulder, see the bubble trail with the broom. Right. The tall one, the toughy sweepy mouse stop. Sweep out the cobweb and the rat bat. The broad one, the toughy sweep out the yard. Bring it from play, now we send it abroad. The coast one, the toughy sweep out the mall. Now bring it go a market, go sweep, no stall. See the bubble trail with the broom. On your shoulder, see the bubble trail blocks with the broom. Nah. Cleansiness are just godliness. Fish in the sea and bird in the nest. That's why him have to sweep out the place where him rest. See the bubble drip like sit the broom. And you should have see the bubble drip like sit the broom. Nah. Sit down pan him step with him pat on him spoon. Him and him daughter does a make pure broom. See the bubble drip like sit the broom. And you should have see the bubble drip like sit the broom. Cause it's a every sweet girl must use perfume Live man must live in a room Only dead man them put in a tomb Cause when me was that had bull in my mother's home Lord, the bubble drill and sit the broom On your shoulder sit the bubble drill and sit the broom When he was a tad bull in his mother's room I guess all day he see the bubble drill and sit the broom eh? Oh, <laughs> said them have a progress yeah. Family, definitely give thanks. If you're just coming in, my family, I mean, we definitely were talking about Patreon's Day. That's uh, the, the Webber, Webberton Day. That will be the 3rd of November, for sure. That's the launch of the Institute uh, website, the official website for the Priest Isaacs Institute of Holistic Knowledge and Radio Anu International. Again, that's Wednesday, the 3rd of November. That will be from 6 a.m. until 12 midnight. Yes, special guests throughout the day, interviews, speakers, special guests, um, sound as well. And, and we will have special offers on all our products throughout the whole day, special on books and, and, and our series and documentaries and courses. Yes, it's, it's a special day. You know, I really gave a good um, run up on it at the beginning. So if you just coming in, don't worry, you'll hear about it very soon. More and more, we'll have a lot more to say. But listen to this, eh? this is a very important um, information I want to give you before we continue to talk about the witches and the broom now. Listen to me, get your pen and your pad, because eh? I like my people to be with me man, and understand what I'm saying. Now, Sunday, the 24th day of October. But this is something else. Yeah, this is something else. <laughs> Sunday, the 24th day of October. You, you with me? All right. This will be at 7 p.m. This will be one of our, our next long-awaited, I mean long-awaited online lecture. Because I know people have been waiting for the online lectures. Remember the online lectures are a YouTube video, right? The online lectures, not even the Tiger's Nest. So, you know, definitely, you're not just coming to hear us talk, not that you ever come just to hear us talk, eh? but for sure, you know, you're getting a scholarly presentation, university fashion, you know, pre pre professor-like presentation. That's really what it is. You know, no time for too much extra talk, but just the facts coming down, coming down, coming down, coming down. And we will be definitely going into the divine black Listen, this is a lecture that your children should be there with you for this one. The divine block. We're going to be talking about the origin of civilization and the presence of blackness. So we're going to be talking, this is going to be a deep presentation. Eh? We're going to be talking about, you know, the black origin of the, the Chinese dynastic, you know, civilization, the origin of uh, black people in Japan, in India, of course, Africa, in Greece, we're going to show you the origin of, of Black in all known civilizations, because these civilizations, when they talk about Greek, Greek civilization and the pantheon and these different things, you know, the, these are held in high esteem. But a lot of us don't know that, that Black is at the root of anything that is known as civilization. And we're going to be using, obviously, our sources and we'll be using pictures so you could clearly see, you know, th that we have our evidence in order. And it's going to be a wonderful lecture. Nothing to, nothing contentious, you know, not trying to convince nobody of nothing. Everything doesn't have to be that. 
it's just a matter of information and it's something that that's why I'm, in, I'm inviting you to even bring your young ones you know we're going to really go all the way out to make sure that it is colorful for them so that they could understand the knowledge and information that we're bringing to them so that's sunday the 24th of october this is not a contribution lecture if there's a price to this this is only 15 dollars eh? hear that only 15 dollars i want you to hear me good eh? the lecture for sunday i'm not talking about patreon day now we're on the next subject let's keep concentration here I'm talking about on Sunday, the 24th day of October, it will be what is known as the Divine Black. And that lecture will be talking about the origin of Black in all civilizations. It's going to be very upful. And the admission for that is only $15, one, five. Hear this, no man, hear this. If you buy your ticket before the 21st of October, which is a Thursday, 6 p.m., you get your ticket for $10, one zero, $10. I mean, the levels of the lecture, $10. Dollars, you and your family can sit down and observe it. So all you have to do is email us. You know which email is Priest Isaac Institute at Gmail. No apostrophe S is now Priest Isaac Institute at Gmail.com. Similar to the website itself. And just tell us you want to get your electronic ticket for the lecture on Saturday evening, or Sunday evening, pardon me, Sunday the 24th. 7 p.m. and we will definitely give you that ticket and uh, in when it's prepared and all you do on Sunday just press the link and you'll be right there with us live as we premiere that wonderful lecture the divine black something you'll definitely full joy in fact we intend to host that lecture on several platforms so you could see it on several platforms so get your ticket today remember if you get it before you get it for only ten dollars you know we can make the transaction again using the cash app or the paypal and at the same time remember that the the the, the, the price for the lecture is fifteen dollars but if you check in before the 21st it's 10. I got to let you know so you could save the five. What do you think? All right. The Divine Black, wonderful lecture. And of course, you're going to hear about it more and more all tomorrow night when you come here again. I'm going to tell you about it. And I'm going to keep telling you about the 3rd of November because this is something I really want everyone to get ready for. All right. Good. Why do witches ride brooms? The history behind the legend. Here it is, the man. From pagan fertility rituals to holis, um, had halo, hallucigen, hallucigen, hallucigenic herbs. Ganja, you know? hallucigenic herbs. Okay, wow. The story of witches and brews is uh, a wild ride. All right, Sarah Pruitt says this. Good. And this is coming from, by the way, the History Channel article. It says here, the evil green-skinned witch flying on her magic broomstick may be a Halloween icon and a well-worn stereotype, but the actual history behind how witches came to be associated with such an everyday household object is anything but dull. It's not clear exactly when the broom itself was first invented, but the act of sweeping goes back to ancient times, when people likely used bunches of thin sticks, reeds, and other natural fibers to sweep aside dust uh, or ash um, from a fire or hearth. Uh, as J. Brian Loader writes, this household task even shows up in the New Testament, which dates to the first and second century AD. The word broom, now this is, this is the heights here. The word broom comes from the spiritual, from the actual, pardon me, from the actual plant or shrub that was used to make many early sweeping devices. 
it gradually replaced the old English word vessel. That is what why I said spiritual. I was thinking about the vessel. Uh, though both terms appear to have been used until at least the 18th century. From the beginning, brooms and besom, also known as bosom, uh, were associated primarily with women. And this ubiquitous household object became a powerful symbol of feminine domesticity. Mm -hmm. Despite this, despite, despite this, the first witch to confess to ride in a broom or bisom or basom was a man. So that's, I guess, a warlock. And hear this name, Gully, is Gully? Gully Ami Edlin. Gully, Gully Ami or Gully Ami? Gully Ami. Gully, Gully Ami Edlin. Wow. Gully Ami. Yeah, I think I got it right. Oh, we, we know me. We know yeah, we know me. Edlin. Hmm. Edlin, eh? Edlin was a priest um, from St. Germain en Lay near Paris. He was arrested in 1453 and tried for witchcraft after publicly criticizing the church warnings about witches. Okay. His confession came on the, his confession came under torture, and he eventually repented, but was still imprisoned for life. Mm -hmm. By the time of Edlin's confession, the idea of witches riding around on broomsticks was already well established. It says here, the earliest known image of witches on brooms date up to 1451, when two il um, illustrations appeared in the French poet Martin, in, in the French poet Martin Le France manuscript, Le Champion des Dames, the defender of ladies. So the broom there defending ladies again. And Martin, so the name Martin appears, Martin de France, de Le France, Fran France, yeah. In the two drawings, one woman soars through the air on a broom, the other flies abroad a plain white stick. Okay. Both wear head scarves that identify them as Wal Waldensians, members of the Christian sect founded in the 12th century, who were branded as heretics by the Catholic Church, partly because they allowed women to become priests. Now, if you notice the the uh, what you call the pointed hat of the witches that you know today wasn't the original headgear of the witches. They would wear something that actually looked like fault, you know. And and I mean, they have many traditions that wear them things like oh, nurses and nuns, and so that they so they wouldn't have worn that pointed tip hat. And you, what is interesting too is that they're saying that the 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 witches. The first witch was a man. And the connection that is made here with the, the bosom. Remember the bosom now for those who were with us a few programs ago, about a few strongs ago when we were doing the program on cannabis. Can you remember we're doing the program on cannabis? And we came across the idea that the biblical cannabis is the literal cannabis. So bosom or bosom which is seen here as broom. So broom is translated as bosom. You get it? Broom is bosom, you know? And, and bosom is kind of bosom, which is marijuana. Because obviously a lot of these, you know, a lot of what we're looking at here is quite symbolic, eh? Jumping on a broom and flying away. Um, I don't think that would necessarily be exactly what is happening in reality. Let us just read this here. I think this is interesting too. Flying witches linked to pagan ritual, question. Anthropologist Robin Skelton, almost said skeleton. Robin Skelton suggests the association between, I'm sure he got marked for that name at school, skeleton. Skelton suggests the association between witches and brooms, no disrespect to him, may have roots in a pagan fertility ritual in which rural farmers would leap and dance astride poles, pitchforks, or brooms 
in the light of the full moon to encourage the growth of their crop. Interesting stuff here. The broomstick dance, that's what it's called. The broomstick dance. All right. So the broomstick dance, uh, she writes, became confused with common accounts of witches flying through the night on their way to orgies and other illicit meetings. Broomsticks were also thought to be perfect vehicles for special ointments, I see, and salves, salves uh, that uh, witches brew up to give themselves the ability to fly, among other depraved activities. All right. In 1324, when the witches, when the wealthy Irish widow Lady Alice, interesting, uh, Kai Teller was tried for sorcery and heresy, investigators reported that in searching uh, Kai Teller's house, that's Alice, they found a pipe of ointment wherewith she greased a staff upon which she uh, upon which she ambled and galloped through through thick and thin galloped through thick and thin all right that, that that's a phrase here as a quote too that to me sounds again somewhat um, um symbolic eh? they found a pipe a pipe of ointment a pipe too remember in alice in wonderland there was a pipe when she dropped through the rabbit hole eh? i want to my, my audience can follow me with this. When we did the video on Alice in Wonderland, it shows Alice dropping through the rabbit hole and Alice herself, you know, she passed the pipe, the chalice, then she got comfortable. And we know the whole of Alice in Wonderland is about the chalice and everything. So I don't think I even have to go there with that. So I just found it interesting. I have to look deeper into this Alice um, um, Kaitella to see the link because she was found with a pipe of ointment wherewith she greased a staff on which she ambled and galloped through thick and thin. That sounds like poetry to me, really. She, where is thick and thin? The bushes? What are you talking about? She galloped through thick and thin. But anyway, all right, good. So so you see, outside of even the, the orgy talk and all of that, that might be for another time. But Again, the broom is associated with the shrub and the plant. And that's the original broom, really. The plant, they pull in the shrub and they sweep the floor. But again, when we look at this on the next level, when you're, when you're flying on brooms, what kind of plant that makes you fly and you fly on the broom? What was the science of jumping on this, this bosom? Because the broom is a bosom and kind of bosom is marijuana. So when you jump on this bosom, this tiny bosom, or, or the brew, and it takes you from here to there, what is the science really behind that? Even the article said it at the beginning, eh? Um, where is it? Hallucinogenic herbs. Mm -hmm. So so the Heights eh, family, you know, and it's interesting that this Martin that wrote what we were reading there, Martin, from St. Martin again, you know, the heights that is more than meets the eye. So a lot of these pagan rituals, then if you want to call them that, that is associated, for example, with Halloween. And Halloween is the same time. Halloween is at the end of October. The end of October, the 1st to the 2nd of November is All Souls, that All Souls moment, that three day, three night is All Souls moment, not just All Souls night. And interesting, the 3rd of November again comes into play. Portals are open during that time. Eh? You better believe it. We've done programs on that in connection to the coronation of even Emperor Haile Selassie the first. So the broom is a mystic thing. Even the way we utilize the broom and handle the broom as Baba Shanti, as I said in that other program, how we sweep and when we sweep, we actually utilize the broom before every Psalms reading. So before Psalms reading, before service, you have to sweep in front of the tabernacle. You know, it's like putting energy and bad spirit away and then at the same time after that what is what is done you um you 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 know you sweep the courts even before the coming of the literal hour of prayer you know and before the the sun set and and we try not to be sweeping in the night after midnight you can sweep certain directions you don't sweep 
you know, we sweep it to the east and to the to the to the north, but as much as possible to the west and to the south. So there's a real high science, the broom, the tall broom, the 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 the, the, the hand broom, the, the regular size broom. All of that is a part of the science that is really even with the structure of the Gaur Shanti order and the broom itself. Right? So yeah, man, give thanks for that spiritual link. I see I've gone over my, 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 my time a bit there. It's like approximately what time we have there. It's like five minutes after the of eight o'clock, but give thanks still for the life giver and the keeper of life with us and uh, give thanks that you could have been patient with that. But hey, I know that time is on us, but let me just remind you again that this Sunday, the 24th, I'm talking about the 24th day of October, we're going to be returning to the online lecture. Of course, only $15 and you get your electronic um, key to come in and the lecture will be the divine black. And this one is, 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 is nice if you bring the young ones to this. We'll be talking about all the ancient you know, civilization, cultures, and where the black nation fits in, not only fits in, but how they become the foundation of all that we admire and speak about from Kung Fu to Karate to Shaolin. Everything will be highlighted to you, brothers and sisters. It's going to be a wonderful presentation. And remember, if you, if you, if you uh, pay for your ticket before the sun set on Thursday, that's the 21st day of October, you'll definitely get it for only $10. Imagine that to come and sit into the, the, the lecture itself this online lecture. And remember, you'll be hearing a lot more about our official launch on the 3rd of November. Please keep it on your calendar as we'll be, as we'll be definitely coming to you and showing you exactly what is taking place. And we'll be having a wonderful time, you know, right here on radio. And that will be from 6 a.m. in the morning to 12 midnight eh? and a lot of different ones coming through. A lot of, you know, ones will be giving you vibes, lecturers, speakers, uh, entertainers. You know, we'll have a special sound system as well that will be giving you some mystic vibes. It's going to be great. Looking forward to seeing you. Blessed love, my family. Give thanks to the life giver and the keeper of life. And Prahadi Selassie first. Give thanks for joy. Give thanks for happiness. Holy Emmanuel I, Selassie I. Ja Rastafari, blessed love.